this beautiful Sunday night, we are coming to you live from our Nile Serena studios. This is Perspective with Josephine Karunji. A very good evening and a warm welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. We are coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Conference Center Nile Room. And tonight we'll be talking about the intrauterine device, IUD, as a form of family planning. Um, someone called it the Mercedes-Benz of modern contraception. She's clearly a very happy user. But then we have other women who are still not comfortable with this method of family planning. So tonight we want to look at the myths and misconceptions that surround it. Let me very quickly introduce my guest for this evening. I'll start with Dr. Moses Odot, who is the Health Services Coordinator, Population Services International, PSI Uganda. And he is also passionate about family planning. Welcome, Dr. Moses. All right, and next to him is Dr. Blandina Nachiganda, who is the Assistant Commissioner for Reproductive Health at the Ministry of Health. She has worked in this field for three years, but uh, she has a past history as a district health officer, and she's an advocate for family planning use. Welcome, Dr. Blandina. Thank you, Josephine. All right, let's quickly say it as it is. <laughs> Benz of family planning, the IUD. Is that is that a description that you would agree with? Yeah. You'd agree with it. Yeah. Okay. What what for somebody who doesn't understand or, or even know what we are talking about when we say the IUD, what is it? Yes. Um, the IUD uh, is one of the methods of contraception or what we call family planning. Um, it's IUD it stands for intrauterine device. Um, some other times we call it intrauterine contraceptive device, the IUCD. Um, it's a small piece of plastic. It is T-shaped and usually comes in two forms. Um, there is the one with copper and then the one which has hormones. Though in Uganda uh, we usually have the one without hormones, without hormones, which is just copper. Okay. Yes. It's the same thing that's called a coil. Yes. Why it is, is it called a coil? I'm assuming a coil would make it like a coil. Well, a, it's a name that has been used over time. Uh, perhaps it's because of the coiling of the, how the copper coils into the, 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 the plastic. Okay. Yes. If we had a picture, we would be able to you know, show you. It looks like. All right. Yes. Um, what has been your experience, both of you as doctors, um, with the IUD? Are women receptive of it? Is it something that is the last resort for them? How, what has it been like? Um, thank you very much, Jasmine. Uh, my experience of the IUD is a very good one. And I think the person who described it as a Mercedes-Benz really described it quite up there. And I think I go for that too, because um, it's something that is really safe very long lasting and um, it doesn't cause damage to the uterus like most people might think and it goes for all age brackets um, not limited to just a few age brackets so it's a very safe method and it doesn't cause anything like cancer because I know from my experience and practice most um, people have said it causes cancer it doesn't. I, I'm going to get into the myths and misconceptions okay. later. Yeah yeah sure so it's a safe method and okay. it's a very good method to use for all age brackets and you can actually use it immediately to give birth and it takes it you can stay with it for a very long time compared to all the other methods that we have around on the market did you say you can use it so you can have it inserted right after birth yeah yes so while the doctor is still in there you might as well just put put the yes. insert it within actually, 10 minutes yeah within 10 minutes yes Okay, let's then get into the myths and misconceptions. Well, first of all, when I posted earlier this week on my social media platforms asking what people thought about it or their, their experiences with it, some of the questions that came up, somebody asked, is it imposed on Ugandans? Is it something that is imposed on us as part of a family planning? Well, <coughs> this would be my reply. Um, it's not imposed on Ugandans. Um, it's just that we as family planning in, and public health programmers, um, we see a need and contraception answers that need. Because if you look at the abortion rates, uh, some study showed um, about 314,000 abortions in a single year in this country. 
And where do, does that come from? That comes because the people who um, would have loved to prevent this pregnancy but couldn't. And so family planning steps in to solve that. And so when we look at the IUD, it's one of you know, the most effective methods of family planning available there on the market. Okay. Yeah, so it's not imposed, we just feel it's a... It's an option. It's an option. Okay. Yeah. Well, when, when I was reading up earlier, um, it seemed that there was a time when the IUD was not safe. Has there ever been such a time where we're using a certain kind of IUD that, that maybe hadn't been tried and tested and, and stumped? Has there ever been a time when it wasn't safe? E yes. Um, the IUD has gone through a lot of changes from the time it came into the market in the 1970s. At one, of, at, at one point, there was a, an issue with the strings. And so whenever the IUD was inserted, that was in the 70s, um, it carried a lot of bacteria up into the uterus. That has since been solved, but the myth has remained that, you know, it causes infections. It doesn't. Okay. So at one point it was had safety issues, but right now the IUDs. But there are still strings on the IUD. So yes. it's not taking away the fear <laughs> for me if you're saying they are collecting strings on its way up. If the strings are still there, what changed? What's What's the new ID like, uh, the IUD like that, that's safe to use? Um, thank you, Jasmine. Uh, just to intervene a bit, um, just to say that it's not imposed, first of all. And as the Ministry of Health, we advocate for a method mix for contraception. So as we listen in and, and as, as we tell the public, there are lots of methods. There are um, um, natural methods and also the modern, modern methods. And the IUD is one of those modern methods of family or child spacing or contraception. So just for the public to know that this is not the only method that we really advocate for. So as a woman, as a man out there, you have various choices to choose from after very, very good counseling by your provider. And we may make a, cho a choice depending on how good the counselor has done this for you. So it's not imposed on anyone. And for all the various methods that are around, you have a choice and you make a choice to use whichever method that you choose. Back to the safety. He's clearly explained the series, and we also know that just um, like all their products on the market, innovations and technologies keep changing. So innovation has come on on how various insertion kits are now on the market compared to before. So the technology that is really upcoming has made the insertion much more sterile and safer compared to ever before. So this comes with innovations and also um, experience and studies. And that is the beauty of science because we learn from what is existing to make products much more better. So I think it's really around the insertion kits that have changed, making okay. it more safe and sterile All compared right. to before. So let, let's get into the myths. Mm -hmm. Myth one, the IUD can cause infections and infertility? Well, <coughs> the IUD, as we talk, um, does not actually cause infections. Um, the major worry about infections come from the process of inserting the IUD and not the IUD itself. That's why we recommend that if before an insertion is done, a, um, the, the prospective user is, you know, tested, a, tested okay. for STDs and any other reproductive infections that could be pushed up during the process of insertion, mm -hmm. but it's not the IUD. I, I, I think one of the people that wrote in said that when she got the IUD, she started getting more infections. So it was either cleanliness, something to do with cleanliness, um, frequency of the toilet, that it opens you up to more infections. Okay, just to mention, he's given a very good explanation, but just to mention that an IUD is not a barrier, um, it's, not, it's not like a condom, for example. A condom would prevent you from getting all these STIs because an IUD is used by two people. So as we start to use it, then there has to be this partner trust. You know, you don't have to have so many partners that you're sleeping around with. If that happens, then you probably have to do a dual method plus a condom. So the chances of getting infections when you have various partners increase on yeah. IUD use if you're also doing lots of various sexual intercourses with various people. So okay. you have to watch out for being uh, like sticking to one partner and then also checking out for infections before it's actually inserted. And when it comes to infertility? Um, it doesn't cause infertility at all. The, no, the known studied methods of causes of infertility are really recorded. 
they could be primary and secondary. But an IUD is just um, um, a, 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 tag, a, a, you know, a device that you place somewhere in the womb, and that's it. It won't cause infertility at all. The only way you may think it may cause infertility is, again, how, you pr um, how you're dealing with your health. If you're not treating infections very well, then you may end up having your tubes blocked, and then that is one way of actually causing infertility to you, but not because the IUD actually caused the infertility per se. Okay. Mm. Right. Um, yes, actually one of the beautiful things about the IUD mm -hmm. itself is that once it's removed, there's almost an instant return to fertility. Mm -hmm. So it cannot again be the one that's causing infertility. Mm -hmm. So you yes. don't need to flush out any hormones because there was never any to, to begin with? No. Okay. The, another myth is the, the IUD is, the, is a big commitment and it's best for women who have had children before. So a single person feels that that's not a method for me? That is not entirely uh, true. Um, the IUD can be used by anyone any age bracket, any number of children. It's just, I could say, it's a tradition that has been, you know, most people who opt for long terms already have, you know, children. And so they want to create a duration between when they can have the next pregnancy. And so that perception has continued that it seems it's for that age group and not us who are, you know, don't have children, but that is not. True. I think it also goes back to the girls fear using it because of infertility. They fear that if I've never had a child, perhaps I'll not have one if I start using the IUD. Mm. That's also Which true. goes for most of the methods, uh, but just the theory about an IUD is the insertion itself. And just to note that for every woman, their opening of the uterus happens every month. So at that opportune time when the uterus opens, then even a girl who hasn't gotten children can actually have the IUD inserted. So it's good for all age brackets. When is the best time to insert an IUD? Right after someone has had their menses, because then the os is open. Okay. The okay. cervical opening. You know, the opening of the to uterus the is tenus. open. Yeah. Um, the IUD causes cancer? That's another myth. Well, <coughs> I would refer to, there was actually an interesting study done in Spain and was published in The Lancet uh, 2011. Um, where they found that women um, who are using IUDs were at half the risk of those who had no prior history of using IUD as a method of contraception. Contrary to popular belief that the IUD causes cancer, it does not. Well, why is there the thought that it causes cancer? Is it related to the copper? Because it's a, w where is it coming from? You know, a myth is a myth. It's something that just goes round without any kind of evidence. But like he said, I think scientifically, we really base most of our um, findings and all these statements on studies. And most studies have shown that it doesn't cause cancer compared to any other methods, if they do. OK. Another myth. Can the IUD move around? Can it go to uncharted territories? Can it migrate and go to places it's not supposed to go within your body? Um, like we've earlier said, the IUD inserted is inserted in the uterus, and the uterus is a closed organ. It's just open where you enter the IUD from. So even if you just looked at yourself, there's no way, there's no connection to any other part of the body. And once it has gotten into the uterus, it spreads right well, it fits very well in the uterus. There's no way it can, not even through the abdomen, it will stick there until you remove it. So, so it, it can't have move even within? No, it no. can't. It can't, can't get out of place it at all. Not. It can no. just get out during the periods when there's some bit of contractions, but it's not that that's the normal thing that it does. So it's impossible that it can get to any other parts of the body. I once read a, a, a post on social media where someone posted and said it had gone to the heart. <laughs> that is something that can never happen because if you look <laughs> at the anatomy, I wish I could draw for you. The uterus is a closed organ. There's no way, unless it's just coming out, but it cannot travel to any other part of the body. Okay, mm. so you said that it can, m it can just move a little but within the, the uterus. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Does it cause any damage if it's moving around? Is there anything that... No, it does not cause damage um, unless the damage is maybe during the process of insertion. But it should not cause any damage. 
to the uterus? Mm. The uterus, Josephine, is a very, it's not a very big organ, yeah? It's a very, and if you had the IUD here, once it's set in there, it spreads out the, the two sides and it's stuck in the uterus. You know, it's stuck there. It cannot it's cause... basically this yeah. size. Yeah. So it, there's no way it can move, unless, just like how your necklace can turn a bit, you know? That's the most it can do, and that is in the earlier days before it really settles down. But after that, it should be there permanently if you want it, for as long as you want. How long can it stay? How, how it long can, can you have an IUD? Yeah, it can. Depends on the manufacturer. Yeah. Yes. Um, you can have it up to 12 years yeah. for the products we have in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, there's five years, there's 12 years. Mm -hmm. That's the maximum it can go is 12 years. Mm -hmm. But you can have it removed any time you, want you want to conceive. Another myth that could be truth is the insertion is painful. Is it painful to insert? Um, I'm just one satisfied user and I think I'm the best one to answer that. It's discomfort, like how you have an injection given, a shot given, a vaccination. The discomfort could be a little more than that of the, the vaccination or an injection because it also has to deal with, you know, someone unleashing your private parts for someone. You know, it's a bit private. So you have to have that confidence of I can actually show this to everyone. And then it's a bit discomforting. But if you get a very good provider, they will counsel you. And they should be able to tell you that this is going to happen even before the process. And during the process itself, then they should be able to say, now we are doing this. Now, you know, explain to the client as you go, such that they are not getting, you know, like surprises. Once the process is done very well and someone is cancelled, tell them, yes, you'll get some discomfort, but it's discomfort that you can manage. You will not need a painkiller. You will not need anesthesia. You will not need um, to sleep when, once they are putting that IUD. So it's just some bit of discomfort, and most of us have gone through it. Um, yeah. Well, like you said, you're, you're a satisfied user, so... Mm -hmm. It, there might even be a bit of a bias, but okay. Um, I know one of the other things that keeps coming up is the abnormal bleeding. Yeah. yeah, That can surely happen. And what I've told people about most of the methods, not only the IUD, all of us are different. I could bleed differently from you. And I could, I would just give a very basic medicine, Panadol. If you take Panadol, some people will tell you it makes me sleepy. Then someone will say, I, mean, I just go on, it actually gets my head off, but then I go on to work. So the IUD, and for any product that we use, any medicines that we use, our bodies react differently. Okay. So the same happens for the IUD. Yes, it may cause, and it sometimes causes that bleeding, because it's a foreign body, in, it's a foreign body in the uterus. So the uterus kind of naturally um, reacts by, I want to, put, to push you out. So in that process of I want to push you out, you could experience cramps, and, cramps okay. and you could experience some bit of extra bleeding. But once the body gets used to the IUD being there, then it settles it down. Settles. Mm. Right, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Conference Centre, Nairobi, Room, and tonight we're talking about the IUD. I wanted to read some of the, the comments that people shared with me, their stories about <coughs> using the IUD. Um, so one lady says, I'm currently using it. It gave me a hard time at the start. I had constant bleeding. I got infections left and right. But now one year down the road, it's great. I can have my things with my husband with no worries. I learned how to avoid infections. I tried using the office toilet and bought only cotton underwear. I prefer it because it's not hormonal. Another person says, um, the only thing the doctor warned me about was that my periods were likely to be heavy and to take extra care of my hygiene to avoid infections. It's nearly four years now, and the only side effect I experienced was heavy periods in the first month. Hygiene keeps coming up as a thing. Mm -hmm. what, what's your, what advice on hygiene? Okay, thank you, Jasmine. I think the hygiene bit, um, okay, um, hygiene is something that is, should be for every um, lady, because now you have something in your uterus. Um, because of those strings, of course they are controlled and you keep folding them in the phonics, but then you have that uh, opening already that is a kind of opening to the other parts of your body. So it's important that you naturally should keep clean, especially if you use public places, like the lady who said they use the public the toilets. toilet. Yeah. yeah, already because of that ex uh, external organ in you, your chances of getting an infection are much higher. So you should ideally keep neat, do some basics like cotton panties, like she said, 
okay. wash better, you know, after the periods, make sure you wash it very clean and fold it back neatly. So you have to do some bit of work on it, but of course, after some time of use, it will naturally come, and then okay. you shouldn't be having any trouble. All right. Um, somebody else said, um, my friend conceived while using it, but at around seven months, she got a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. She conceived while she had the IUD. Mm -hmm. After, um, yeah, is that possible? Can you conceive while you have the IUD? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the IUD, like every method, um, none, it's rare to find one that is 100% effective. Okay. The IUD is estimated to be 99% effective. Uh, that means that out of every 100 women, one might be unlucky. So she was one. Then. She was I actually the unlucky have heard one. about a number of, uh, maybe two people who have yeah. said they've conceived on an IUD, but it's not something that is really that common. Like it's given the statistics, around 99% safe. So we give that 1% to chance. And yeah, but it's true that chance people happens. have actually, yeah. But it's one of the methods that you can actually rely on. Though I think we've seen people coming up saying they've Unless conceived Unless you're the 1%. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but also, yeah. um, now the miscarriage at, 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 at seven, at seven months, months um, I think it was a mm. host of other factors. Mm. But I'm going to come to a miscarriage because somebody else uh, mm. shared a similar experience. Okay. So another person said, after one child, my wife tried um, the shot. It was messy for her. Eventually, we changed to IUD in 2012. Four years later, we had even changed and all was well. Then she decided to have another baby. She miscarried the first time, second time as well, similar style. Then somebody recommended some gynecologists. They went to the hospital and they reviewed the history and asked them not to use the IUD again. Uh, when they asked why, um, they said, if, well, it was, it's good for many. It appears in their case, it had upset some hormones in the body and led to a weaker uterus mm. or, or something like that. So the gynecologist put them on pills and told them to relax. And then their next child was conceived. Mm. And um, this person says he remembered asking the doctor. Um, and the doctor said, the IUD is not good for people who want to have children again. That most of the time, if you wanted a child after a prolonged use of IUD, you had to wait for a while after removing it. Well. Like initially, I, I just gave a brief comment. When you just get the IUD in, your body naturally kind of would reject it, eh? mm. the uterus, and that's why you get cramps and all these things, and that's why you get much more heavy bleeding. It's a foreign body. It's a foreign body. So naturally, your uterus would want to eject it, eject it. And some, like you've said, your hormones many times may say, I think this is something I don't really want to deal with. So when another foreign body, now the baby, we call it, again, it could happen, I think. But it's not something that, again, may happen for all the women. So it's just still one of those rare cases where the body just fails on it. So these, are, like these mm. are two rare cases, but mm. they're both miscarriages, mm. you know, from... But I think we yes. also needed to do some bit of more investigation on what has happened during that time. You know, you cannot just uh, tie the cause to the IUD only. I think more investigations on that should be done exactly. to ascertain what else could have changed within that time. Because the, the, the doctor uh, took uh, them through their history and mm -hmm. IUD was the, the thing they pointed at, mm -hmm. he pointed at. Of course, mm -hmm. the, maybe what we can note is that we don't have a lot of information um, based on what was the exact detail of that history. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of factors will contribute towards your getting pregnant and up to term and, you know, producing a live baby. Mm -hmm. So, whereas the IUD may have been part of the story, mm. I have a strong feeling that was not solely to blame mm. for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. We wanted to take some questions from, from the audience. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, our moderator and our visitors tonight. I'm Nasur Mwestigwa. I want to request the, advoc the, the people are in advocates. Why don't you? a request for the government to make these contraceptives free for people who are below 18 years because we are seeing they are the most victims of early pregnancies. And uh, next, do you think family planning is more economically important in our Uganda today? Okay. Thank okay. you very much. So the question on, on making it free for people below the age of 18. Okay. Thank you very much. We know that the legal age of consent in this country is 18 years. And for government, I think that the role is to continuously keep the girls in school 
because before 18 years we expect that most of the children should be in school so let's encourage parents and encourage all our children to keep in school and abstain and abstain from having sex because the legal age of consent is 18 but we also know that there are children who are actually giving birth so you need to understand under what circumstances the children is she married because if she's married then she'll she'll have so many children before she gets to child marriages yeah so you have to also understand the dynamics in which you're operating under this particular client's operating, you know. So if they are married, then the case changes for them. But the key message for government is keeping the children in school, giving them sexuality education so that they know how to behave, life skills, so they don't have to conceive so early. He spoke about um, making these contraceptives free. And so I'm asking, one of the other things about the IUD is people say it's expensive. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it expensive to get an IUD? Well... Um, my response to that would be, depends on how you look at it. Um, whereas the cost of the IUD itself ranges anywhere between 500 shillings and maybe 2,500. So just the IUD itself? The IUD itself. Okay. The costs of the service, the insertion, may vary from as low as 5,000 or even free yeah, in the, the public, public institutions. Mm -hmm and to as much as, you know, 250000 mm -hmm. In some countries, it goes up to $1,000 and beyond. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, there is no standard price. Mm -hmm. But just to say that cumulatively, I mean, you have to really figure out how you calculate your costs. He's clearly said that for the public sector, it's free. So for all the government hospitals where you would go, you would get it free of charge. But just to say that for the IUD, once you insert it and it goes well for you, you will have it for 14 years, 12 years. Yeah. Compared to any other methods, maybe the short-term methods, the shorts where you keep going to the hospital three months and then go back. So you really have to, you know, put in all these costs of going to the hospital and coming back home this month. And then going back, maybe the pills, you know. So I think it's a very cheap method compared to all the other methods because it has a very longer period of stay, which m many people would call a couple years of protection. Their couple years of protection is much higher than the rest. So cumulatively it becomes very safe and very cheap. 500 and free for the public sector. Right. Okay. Um, yes, and before you say... Um, there was another question. Yes, another question. And he had a question. He, he had a question. I, I want us to base our focus mm -hmm. today on the IUD because that was the point of this conversation. So mm -hmm. the other question, I think we can have a conversation mm -hmm. about it after, after the conversation. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. I hope your question is about the IUD. We can hear you. Just speak. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. My name is Bruce from Makara University. Uh, my question is, when you decide to use IUD, uh, and uh, at a certain stage, you want to have a uh, next pregnancy. How long does it take to have the next pregnancy? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Josephine, for mobilizing this very nice crowd because you see the questions are coming up from, from the, the men. <laughs> so I think the male engagement strategy is really working very well. But just to say, the moment you remove your IUD, you should be able to conceive immediately because the moment it's out, your uterus is free to get onto another baby. So it immediately, I immediately. take it out today, yes. tomorrow conceive. I can conceive. Of yes. course, depending on your cycle also, you have to, you know how the natural conception takes place. So once you remove and you're good to go, then you should be able to conceive, depending on your safe days and unsafe days. Can yes. I check out the IUD myself or do I have to go to the hospital? <laughs> Uh, for someone who is technical, they can, but we would advocate that everyone who wants to take it out goes back to the place where it was inserted. Lest they damage the... Lest they yes. take it out badly. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. um, maybe just adding to that, um, the IUD is not hormonal. Mm -hmm. It is simply something that is settling there, that is preventing, you know, movement of the sperm to go and fertilize the egg. So the moment you remove it, mm -hmm. it's like a roadblock, I could say, in a loose oh, way. Yeah. So the moment you remove it, mm -hmm. can the pass. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it's not like a hormone that has to be first cleared from your body system, takes mm -hmm. some time. Yeah. Yeah. But just like, um, I think the IUDs in country are the ones that are not hormonal. Yes. But just to mention that if you go to any other parts of the world, they could have the hormone, the ones that are implanted with hormones. So that the yeah, situation, yeah. May, yeah. So you have to ask and, and yeah. But what we have in country is non-hormonal. It's non-hormonal. So you, it should be able to work for you immediately. You take it out. Okay. Another yeah. question. Very good explanation. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Okot Rogers from Chambogo University. Uh, there is a saying in the society: people are totally negative about the family planning methods. Since IUD is one of the family planning methods, so there is a saying that people say that 
we are to produce and fill the world. So I don't know what you can say about that. What do you say, away from what people say? Me? Yes. Yeah, I also concur with them. Mm -hmm. We should produce and fill the world. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe so you, you <coughs> who are against producing yes. and filling the world. I, I would <laughs> give a quick response to that. Um, if we look at countries that have, you know, made a lot of progress, the Chinas, the Japans, they have massive populations, which is good, right? Um, but if you look at the age structure, you find that the people who are paying taxes, the people who are contributing to the economy, mm -hmm. are the old ones. Now, when you come to Uganda, um, our current estimates are about 42.8 million. Mm -hmm. um, but half of that are below 15 years, isn't it? Over half. Mm -hmm. Yes, over half. Mm -hmm. Of the other 50 percent, um, the, the, what we call the youth, up to the age of 35, you know, we have unemployment of about 80%. And so they are also not paying taxes and not contributing a lot. So if mm -hmm. it was a highly productive population, mm -hmm. it would be good to keep that. Mm -hmm. So family planning comes to help people plan so that you have your children given the best education, best health, so that by the time you're feeling the world, they are very productive mm -hmm. citizens. I think we're actually moving away from calling it family planning. We want yes. to call it child spacing. Child spacing. Yeah, we just <coughs> want to space the children well so that they can <laughs> grow well and the mother doesn't get overwhelmed with the so many babies. So it's not really family planning, it's child spacing. But he's clearly said how it works. The problem with our population is many of us youth are unemployed and it's because we have a very small population of people who are working. So if we can change that dynamic, then it wouldn't be a problem. Is child spacing a more acceptable term? Uh, you can just speak without it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's child Let's spacing. Let's take another short yeah. break and we'll be right back. Coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Conference Center, now room, and we're talking about the IUD this evening. Another question. Uh, thank you very much. I'm called Memory Ejang from Chambugo University. Uh, now, I am wondering, it's my first time hearing about the IUD, so now um, uh, I just need to be clarified on how it is inserted and removed. Does it need an operation or, I don't know, mm -hmm. I just need more clarification and how does it look like? Is it kind of metallic, big, what? Yeah, that's okay. what I need to know. Thank you very much for such a question and I'm happy at least today you got to know about the IUD so it's a good step that you've made. It's a plastic um, tea Ship. shaped item. Very small, just like the palm, it's just that small and in Uganda we have some copper at the end and the way it works is it just prevents entry of the sperms. It's not an operation for the insertion. Um, have you tested for cancer of the cervix before for example? How that is done is the same procedure for those of you who know. It's not an operation and like I said, you don't have to sleep before they can insert it. The same for removal. Uh, and like I said, you have to go at a time when your opening of the womb is, um, of the uterus is open. And that is most likely when you finish your periods or around the end of your period. So it's that easy. It's not an operation. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Perhaps... A brief about the procedure. Of course, okay. the, the medical practitioner will mm -hmm. counsel you mm -hmm. on the benefits, risks, side effects, mm -hmm. and then af when you consent, um, you, you just you know do preliminaries like emptying your bladder, and then you lie somewhere. A small, uh, <laughs> not so small <laughs> device called a speculum will be placed to for us to see the cervix. Mm. And then of course the swabbing and all that, mm. then the, it's, it's inserted while it's folded and it opens inside. So there's no operation? So no. there's no operation. Mm. There will only be mild discomfort, mm. um, but not, it's not really that painful. Mm. Okay. Yes. And the question. removal is more or less the same. The purposes of information, what is the relation between the, the IUD and this ring they put here on the arm. I like to know. The implant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Nakunda. These are two different contraceptive methods. So they are not they are the relation is that, that they are all contraceptive methods, but they are all different. The IUD we've spoken very well about it, the insertion has been spoken about and the removal. And the implant has hormones. 
So these are two different methods. So they are related because they are contraceptives, but totally different in how they operate. Yeah, yeah. just to add on okay. to that. Um, mm -hmm. just, just hold yeah. on. Yes. Yes. Dr. Yes. Um, there are methods we call the long-acting oh, reversible yeah. contraceptive yeah. Yeah. contraception, mm -hmm. which is basically the <laughs> IUD and the implant, yeah, what sure. you've just yeah. asked. Yeah, that's that's the faintest of <laughs> relations that can yeah. be, but th they're really different. One is a hormone, the other one is it's just a barrier. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so the implant is three, three years? Yeah. Yes. Four depends four also. It depends. Three depends also five? on the implant okay. that you're using. Three or five. <coughs> three or five. All right. Yeah. Another question. Thank you very much. I'm called Katiwariu Asaf. Uh, I do know are you these are uh, placed in private parts. I'm wondering, uh, ladies should do specialized in doing that, or also men do it? I'm wondering how men do it. Are there are you these for men? <laughs> <laughs> no. There are no are you these for men. <laughs> uh, if if we just <laughs> listen to the word. IUD, intrauterine, means into the uterus. uterus. No, mm. men don't have. <laughs> but, just, <laughs> <laughs> but I think he also asks that um, it's placed in the private parts. I think we all understand what he meant by private parts. Though, let be speaking, um, it's not that IUDs are inserted by only women. Even the male nurses, the male doctors will insert them. Just like how your wife goes and the gynecologist is a male doctor, they would still give birth to the baby. So same for the IUD. But mm. the man won't get an IUD. But the man, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your question. Yes, uh, thank you so much, our experts. I'm Kran Mamwesiwa from KIU. Uh, my question is, uh, when I tried to read the, the US uh, Family Planning Act of 1970, it says that uh, it is best, the insertion is best done during uh, your menstrual period. Mm -hmm. And what could be the rationale for that? Thank you so much. OK. Um, She's she already mentioned she, she that. actually explained that yeah. very accurately. Mm -hmm. um, during the time of your periods, mm -hmm. in order to allow that blood to come out, mm -hmm. the cervix, the, or the, the entrance to the uterus is a bit more open. Mm -hmm. So inserting it at that particular time creates less of a discomfort mm -hmm. than at any other time. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it is for the comfort of the woman. Yeah. Who is getting there? Yes. Right. The final question. Thank you so much. My name is Hilary Musade. Mine is simple. Is it of any effect to one's size? Or like does it cause someone to be big or small? Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. Like we've said, this IUD is just um, a, a small thing. It doesn't have any hormones. It doesn't have anything inserted. It's just a blockage, like how you put a roadblock. It just blocks sperms to get into interface with a woman's eggs. That's how it works. So it won't make you fat. It won't make you anything. It will just make you not get the sperms to get to your egg, to the woman's egg. So okay. it will not have any changes in your body size. Right. So it's not hormonal? No, and it's and not. Thank you very much. My name is Vera Hussain, Chambago University. Uh, since you said that this I, IUD is a device and it's placed in a class, I hope it is painful. You hope it is painful? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why because do you hope it is painful? Because the weight is placed inside and it is in the private part. Mm. So I would like to ask our panelists. So when you're inserting that stuff inside, they first give you dirty, they first give you that syringe for like we say or what? Okay. Again, we had mentioned that a bit. We said it's just discomfort. And the reason your colleague in front of you just asked, why do we place it at that time? Because the opening of the womb is open, so it's easier and nicer to place it then. It's just discomfort. You don't need any painkiller. You don't go to sleep. You just need good counseling and good insertion. Okay. Mm -hmm. He hopes it's painful. I don't know why he wants <laughs> us to feel pain. The final one, the very final one. Thank you so much. I'm Derek Mutumba, a student of Chambogo. Uh, you said something that you can someone can get pregnant when it's inside does it form does it cause any deformities on the fetus okay mm. um some people are unfortunate enough to get pregnant um but that's only one mm -hmm. out of a hundred mm -hmm. yes it does not form or cause any deformity to the fetus mm -hmm. actually sometimes um the gynecologist will just encourage you know continue with the pregnancy mm -hmm. up to term mm -hmm. Deliver the baby mm. plus the IUD. Mm. Oh, so you keep the IUD in and yes. Okay. Mm. Yes. 
All right. Um, the, okay, I'll just take one more. Uh, thank you very much. I'm Onyango Edi from Chambago University. Uh, speaking about the period of the of of the IUD in the uterus, uh, they said the uterus sometimes can contract. So, for someone who is using it for around the period of around nine years, twelve years, mm -hmm. do you advise that person to be coming back for regular checkup in case this uh, it contracts? And I I, get, I know when it contracts, there's some damage because. Uh, that thing is uh, a plastic. So, do you advise this person to okay. be coming regularly for some and just, checkups? Uh, just to say that all of us need regular health checks, not only when you're having the IUDs. So, regular health checks is a must for everyone, not only for contraception, but for your general health. But that said, that contraction that we talked about is just in the beginning when the body just realizes that, hey, there's this foreign body. They want to say, go away, go away, you're not part of us. And it's just for the very first time when you insert it. But the next month, that might not happen even. So that is why sometimes when you've just inserted it, someone will give you some paracetamol, panado, <coughs> to keep the pain down. But it just happens for the first one month. If it goes so bad, then for two or three months. But after that, it's not a problem anymore. But regular health checks is a must. You should go every year for a regular health check, not only for your contraceptive method, but for your general physical well-being. OK. Um, also, just to add on to that, um, after giving someone an IUD, uh, we usually give what we call post-insertion instructions. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we, we tell them after every menstrual period, you can check for the strings by either sitting or squatting. But after washing your hands mm -hmm. you know, very clean, and you, you check if it's still in place. Mm -hmm. Because in under very few, uh, very rare circumstances, we've had it being, you know, coming out most during the periods, most especially. Yes. How is it able to come out during the periods and as we close? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, same mechanism she... I she know because it's a, the opening is a bit Yes. Little, but yeah. isn't it, would it be um, I think it would come out if someone plays around with it, mm -hmm. but if you're just enjoying your period and not doing anything with the IUD, you're not touching the strings, it shouldn't come out. It's under very rare it's circumstances. after the period, like he has mm. said, then you just try to see it's in good space. It hasn't tilted a bit. Then you just pull the strings again. But it shouldn't come out unless you're playing with it. Okay. It shouldn't come out at all. All right. What would you like us to take home from this conversation? And I'll start with you, Dr. Moses. Yes. Um, there are very many methods out there. Mm -hmm. um, I would strongly um, recommend you're free to, you know, get any method from your counselor, mm -hmm. but I would recommend the IUD because it's not hormonal, it, um, the side effects are minimal, it does not cause cancer, it takes really a long time, and even what I could lose, let's say, the maintenance costs is, 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 is really down. It's really an effective method. Mercedes-Benz is not easy to maintain, but... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if, if, but uh, Mercedes, there's no, you know, car that is as efficient as mm, okay. the Benz, isn't uh, it? Just yeah. to say, like you know. said, there are very many methods, and the message to take home is child spacing. You need to space your children very well so that the mother doesn't get tired, the child grows up very well, and the IUD is just one of those methods. But read about all the others, and before you insert, have a very good medical exam done on you so that you get the best method for your body type. Okay. Thank you. So I know that there are some things that they've, they've um, kept coming up about the heavy bleeding. Can we just know some facts, some mm -hmm. things that are bound to happen mm -hmm. once you insert the IUD so that somebody doesn't insert it and start thinking there's a problem now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, many of this should come out during counseling. We mm -hmm. um, <coughs> would call them facts, but does not mean that every woman who gets an IUD will actually get it mm -hmm. but we are most of the people who rather a fraction of the people who take it we expect issues like mild cramping but also because our pain thresholds are different yes, yes. so your cramping could be different from my okay. cramping yes mm -hmm. and uh, if you have been having periods of about three days it mm -hmm. could move to four and could be slightly heavy just for the first few mm -hmm. you know months mm -hmm. then later on it stabilizes first few months being one to three one to six 
It also depends okay. on the person. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. I, was, I was hoping, I was waiting for one of the men to ask about if a man will fill the IUD, but nobody did. Would you like to clarify on that as well? Actually, this campaign, you could talk about the campaign, but this campaign is called Sigaza Feeling. Feeling. So it, it goes well for the men and women. You, the woman, you would still want to to Sigaza Feeling, and also the man would feel like nothing ever happened. So it's a good method. It doesn't change so anything about you. So a man will not feel you. it? No. no. It's Why am possible. I asking as though I'm a man? <laughs> 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 no, but I thought we should, we should clarify it for them. Thank you so much, both of you, for taking the time to, to speak with us about the IUD. And I hope our studio audience and also our audiences whom at home has picked something from it. Well, that was our show for tonight. Thank you for watching. Coming up is NTV Weekend Edition. Keep it NTV.